Yo, hello, hello, welcome to another edition of Soccer As We Like It, the Man United direction. We have a lot to talk about this weekend. We have the FA Cup, we have transfer updates, we have player transfers in and out, and we have players in reference to what's going on in Manchester United. Thank you for joining us. Tomorrow is a big game in an FA Cup third round, Manchester United against Watford. Let's start with the transfer updates. We know that Diallo has now joined United. He's now taken his medical. Everything's been done. Everything has been orchestrated. I think they're going to give him shirt number 19. I'm not too sure. Don't quote me on that. But words out of old Trafford is that number 19 jersey is what he's going to be wearing. Uh, so that's a player who we signed in summer who's gonna, who has now joined us now in January. So it's not an actual January signing. It is just what had been come which has just come to light to say we paid for it then he's now arrived now now the thing is this the transfers now united still require a center back and united are still not targeted any center backs for this season we we're now in day six of the transfer window with 24 days to go who are united center back targets we still need an improvement from Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's uh, uh, transfer uh, uh, press conference, Rojo and Romero will be leaving the club this transfer window because they are not being given extended contract. Rojo's back in Argentina. Romero, I really feel the club treated it badly. Um, a lot of you United fans will agree with me that um, United should have done something better with Romero. Romero for what he'd done for United as the second keeper to that David De Gea. But it is what it is. It's sad. And I don't think the club treated him well. We all heard what the wife said yes last summer, the last summer transfer window that her, her, her the club blocked his transfer to another club for certain reasons that they wanted more money or things along those lines. But this is the, the harsh, cruel reality of football. So we do move on. If Rojo's gonna leave. Uh, 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 Romero's going to leave what about Jones when is Phil Jones going to leave this club when is he going to pack his bag and I've told you guys so many times on this channel I will personally drive the cab to take that guy to his club because that guy is honestly just there when was the last time you saw Phil Jones play and probably about a season and a half ago because he's, he's just he needs to be removed just get rid of him because Honestly, when it comes to the centre backs, we're, we're we're literally down to three: Maguire, Baye, and um, and Lindelof. Jones is is not even part of the team. Rojo is about to be sold anyway. So you see what I mean? Rojo's injury prone. Jones injury prone. So what is the point of having this player? I don't know why Jones is not being shipped out. Do I sense a bias here? Your call. Drop your comments, tell us what you think about this. Okay, let's proceed. Tomorrow's the FA Cup game against uh, Watford. United have been dumped out of the Carabao Cup same final, as we all know, when, on Wednesday, which was a very poor performance displayed by United on that given day. Yes, people say, oh, they did, they beat us with set pieces. Uh, excuse me? Are we supposed to be defending set pieces? It doesn't mean, or I would rather. Learn how to defend set pieces because every team will have a corner kick. Every team will have a, a set piece. It's unavoidable. It's part of the game. So fans who are saying, oh, they couldn't beat us in open play. Really, guys? Really? Have we got to that point whereby you're judging United how they consider the goal? All the goals that have eliminated us. RB Leipzig game. Sevilla game. What were they? Crosses into the box and we can't deal with it. So that's the point. We can't keep giving these monkeys, these clowns, a pass. They failed defensively. And that is the bottom line. I will move on. Right. This game against Watford tomorrow, United definitely are going to sh uh, uh, change a few players around. I think Igalo will be involved. Whether he's going to start against his old team, I don't even think Ole Gunnar Solskjaer is going to start him. But this is where we are. He might rest Rashford, rest Martial, put them on the bench, and maybe if things are not going to come to plan, probably bring them on. Um, he might start Mason. He might start Mata. He might start... I don't think he'll start by because he's got the game against Burnley on Wednesday. He might start... Um, who else will he start? 
Uh, Daniel James might start. So he might change the team. McTominay is definitely going to start. He probably won't play Pogba. So Van der Beek will start. But this is the problem. This takes me on to the Van der Beek situation. A lot of fans have been quite disappointed. And he was asked in his press conference, what is the situation with Van der Beek? He's trying to say, or he's going to try to say, we're trying to bed him in. Bed him in? This guy's a professional player who was playing for Ajax that won the league title, whatever, and, and he played professional. No, 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 no. Van der Beek is a good player. He's not someone just bed in. He plays for his country, for Christ's sake. Even the Dutch Association of Football Association begin to like, uh, bro, are you sure you made the right choice? Because after coming on for four minutes in a Carroll Cup semi-final that United were being knocked out of, fans, my fellow United community, I was on Facebook recently after the game and I was saying, in reference to what you guys thought, what was the essence of Van der Beek playing against United, uh, uh, Man City with four minutes to go? He wasn't brought on as an impact player to change the game or to stop Man City from scoring any goals at 1-0. He was brought on at two and four minutes to go. You know what one, one, one United fan said? Oh, he was brought on so he could make uh, appearance money. What the fuck? Appearance money? Really? When do fans care about making appearance money? Fans want players who will make impact when the favourite team is losing to the noisy neighbours. In our case, Manchester City. And some clown, she knows how foolish she was to say, Oh, um, that, uh, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer brought that up so he could make appearance money. Appearance money? With four minutes to go? Do fans really care about appearance money? What the hell's that got to do? Your team is leading 2 0 and Ole didn't bring the guy on earlier. <sighs> so, Van der Beek and his people are quite disappointed. And are beginning to question United's plans for Van der Beek. The Dutch football, the people in, the, in, in his home country are beginning to sound like, you know what, uh, as talented as this guy is, he can't even get to the team. When players like McTominay, Fred, Mata, even Daniel James get, ahead, get in ahead of him. So it is a bit worrying for the Dutch man. And even I remember six, three months ago, you, a Dutch legend, Marco van, Marco van Basten said, United do not know what they are doing to be benching Van der Beek. That, it wasn't even as bad as it is now. I'm a big, avid fan of Van der Beek. I don't think he's giving enough game time. But what Ole is trying to say is, he's trying to bed him in, giving him more time, that he's not seeing what he wants from Van der Beek in training. Hmm. Because sometimes, some of the players who do fantastically well in training, go on the field and still mess up. So I'm kind of not understanding what Ole is on about at this moment in time. If you get me, while you're watching our video, don't forget to smash a like on the video. Please drop your comments. What do you think about this Van der Beek situation? Uh, we, uh, what do you think? Do you think Van der Beek should be allowed to be coming on four minutes to go? Was, was he brought on for football appearance money? Tactic, because tactically, it was rubbish. Absolute nonsense. I think it was absolute bollocks. For Van der Beek, I thought it was actually a disrespect to bring him on for Mr. Go World 2 0 down. What was the essence? It was just, I don't get it. But if, I, if you can make me understand what, why he came on, I would love to hear your comments. So drop them right there. Thank you very much. So let's move on there. Pilistri, as you know, has tested positive. So he was about to be put in the game for tomorrow. But obviously, with his COVID test positive, he would not be playing that game. Which is quite disappointing. It would have been his first team game for the club. Because he's been playing very well for the under-23, wearing the number 7 shirt, and delivering what he needs to do. And he's been bedded in into the academy. But he's done well. But unfortunately, COVID has decided to like uh -uh, stop that on the track. So he's going to be self-isolating. And uh, yeah, it's just quite sad. But we wish him a speedy recovery. Uh, the British government has told... All football clubs, especially the elite clubs, to make sure their players follow COVID protocols. Because 
the spread is going like a wildfire and they don't seem to have if the protocols are not followed the clubs need to take disciplinary action on the players which makes a lot of sense even Jose Mourinho and games are starting to get postponed. The Aston Villa have closed their training ground because some players tested positive. Because players are tra tested twice a week. And Aston Villa players' training grounds have been closed. Which means, like, Jose Mourinho came out today, or was it yesterday? Actually, today I was watching Sky Sports and BBC. He was saying, um, I can't keep postponing games because it's becoming to be a backlog. His team all tested negative. It's not his fault that the other team tested positive. He said players need to be given stricter protocols on how to follow guidelines. That the teams need to be more strict and firm. So, I understand. He does, because, think about it. As tight as this season is, the more you have backed out games, the harder your chance is to win these games. And the harder it is for you to plan your games. So that is where we are in reference to strict positive COVID protocols. We, so we wish uh, 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 Pellistri a, a speedy recovery. Now, we all know United have to beat Watford tomorrow to qualify to the fourth round. So we've lost. Carabao Cup was the best chance to win the trophy that we have lost. So that we will put that in a box and put that to next season. FA Cup is the next trophy available. Can we win it? Can we get past the semi-final? Just have to wait and see, wouldn't we? Um, so, playing tomorrow, I think you know, they need to be, without that, they need to be Watford. Like, they just got, we need to be Watford. It is done. We need to be Watford. Igalo will start? No, he won't start. He'll probably come on, probably, what, 20 minutes to go, 15 minutes to go, whatever. That is what Oli's going to do. Well, we all know what Oli's going to do. Uh, on the final note, United still haven't made any signings. So don't get confused. Don't be hoodwinked that we made a January signing. No, that was a signing from last summer. That he only just arrived. You ordered your car. Fully loaded. You paid for it. They said they'll ship it to you in six months' time. That's where we are. We paid for it. He just arrived in there. So there is no January signings yet. We need January exits. Jones, Rojo should be shipped out. As for Lingard, I heard other teams are looking for him. Hey, okay. Bye. Thank you. Have a lovely time. Thank you for your services. And out you go. So this is where we are. No signings in January yet. Yes, still early. We need a centre back. Van der Beek is unhappy. Pilistri has tested positive. United need to qualify for the fourth round by beating Watford tomorrow. By putting a kind of a semi-strong team. Then we have the game against Burnley on Wednesday. And that's the almighty game in hand. We win that game, we go top of the table. Can United do it? They can. Will they? We'll just have to wait and see. Because on Weekend next week, we're going to Anfield to play the Premier League champions. We will just see about. So let's just take to the, tomorrow's game against Watford. Take try and get the get the result. Go into the fourth round draw. See how that goes. See who we meet. Then we play Burnley on Wednesday. After the Burnley game, we will meet the Anfield Giants on Sunday. That will be a game. I uh, will see you guys tomorrow after the Watford game. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Follow us. We have our fans reactions. We'll have our fan counts. Interview the fans after the game. And we shall talk to you tomorrow. From me, Tim Ross, your guy. I will see you tomorrow after the Watford game. Glory, glory, Man United. Don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow. We're going to get it.